the soothing strings of a guitar have a profound therapeutic effect. The sound of the acoustic guitar is very special. Dr. Wilson Ashfora began playing the guitar as a teenager in Brazil. In the beginning, my father didn't want me to play guitar. He wanted me to be a doctor. And my mom said, no, 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 you have to play the guitar. And then I did both. Music is Ashfora's hobby. His career is neurosurgery with Sanford Health. He's equally passionate about both. I play every type of music. I do every type of neurosurgery. <laughs> Ashfura is a leading innovator in his medical field. He holds some 20 patents and is the inventor of a surgical instrument that drains blood clots from the brain. All that on top of the long days he spends in the operating room. Today I did six surgeries. <laughs> I started at seven. I just finished. So it's pretty busy. Ashfora performs here at the Carnival Brazilian Grill about every six months or so, but he admits to coming down with a bad case of stage fright when he performs. I, I shake a lot when I'm playing in front of people. Shaking is not good if you're a neurosurgeon. Yeah, I don't shake when I do neurosurgery. <laughs> but when I'm in front of a big crowd and I'm playing classical guitar, yeah, I, I, I'm tense. <laughs> Ashfura says he hasn't been able to practice guitar as much as he'd like ever since he came to the United States in 1980 to begin his surgical training. The, the priority is neurosurgery because that, you know, that's how I feed the family. <laughs> Ashfora played in this Mother's Day concert at Carnival with world-renowned percussionist Ciro Batista, who's performed with the likes of Paul Simon. Rubbing musical shoulders with such giants of the industry is just one of the positive side effects for Ashfora, who finds parallels between his music and medicine. Both guitar playing and surgery are technically demanding, requiring dexterous fingers to strike all the right chords with the healing arts and the performing arts. With Ian Kelloland, I'm Perry Grove. Ever since the tragic moments of Saturday morning shooting in Tucson, Americans have been hoping and praying for the recovery of Representative Gabrielle Giffords, who had a 9mm bullet pass through her brain. And tonight, President Barack Obama delivered some good news about her progress. Right after we went to visit, a few minutes after we left her room and some of her colleagues were from Congress were in the room. Gabby opened her eyes for the first time. It's just the latest of many positive signs Giffords has shown since she was shot. And she's like to be alive. Dr. Wilson Asfora says the fact that Giffords has been able to raise her arms, give a thumbs up, and respond to commands just days after suffering a gunshot wound is encouraging. That's a great sign. That means that she can move the right so she won't be hemiplegic. She can understand speaks, speech, but we don't know if she can actually talk. Representative Giffords is slowly being taken off sedatives, and Dr. Asfora says as that happens, doctors will be able to assess her long-term prognosis even more. She may need some speech therapy, she may need some physical therapy, or may not. It all depends uh, of her condition. Once the drugs are out, and she's extubated, there's no more tubes in her mouth, and then we can assess better. But the fact that she is moving and now opening her eyes opens the door for a positive recovery. If she's doing that, uh, that her prognosis is probably very good. Jason Lemmy was willing to undergo a surgery that could have resulted in brain damage if his doctor hadn't convinced him that he needed to be awake during the operation. And if you damage these areas, the patient will not be able to talk or understand the, the spoken language. And to, in order to preserve speech, the only way you can do it is with the patient awake. 
That's all it took to convince 28-year-old Jason Lemmy that he needed to be an active participant as his doctor removes a cancerous brain tumor. From the way I understand it, you don't remember it. So I, I don't know if I like the idea about being awake during it, but as long as I don't remember it afterwards, it should be okay. Can you cut, count to 10? Yeah, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This is what Jason won't remember, and as remarkable as it may seem, sedatives and numbing medications, along with the fact that the brain has no nerve endings, means he feels no pain during the operation. I tried to make the smallest possible incision and then the smallest possible opening uh, in, 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 so that the patient can tolerate the procedure better and recover faster. Yeah, Do you wiggle your toes? You guys, is he wiggling? Yep. yep. Everything looks good. Throughout the surgery, Jason is asked to answer questions or move parts of his body. The correct response ensures the surgeon removes only the tumor, not functional brain tissue. The vessels going through the tumor, and if you damage one of these vessels, they would have a stroke. While Asphora was able to remove 90% of the 4 by 2 inch tumor, some of it is too close to critical pathways to remove surgically. Radiation is the next step in Jason's treatment. So with the Novalis we can focus the radiation just to the area of the tumor to have better control of tumor growth or recurrence. Believe it or not, Jason will be out of the hospital in less than 48 hours. It will be about two months before his skull heals completely. That's right. You are about to see a treatment that until now wasn't available between here in Denver or here in Chicago. And while the technology has been around for the past five years, it's a medical first here in Kelloland. 65-year-old Roger Allen is the first to admit it's going to take a lot of Valium to soothe his nerves today. But he also knows this is a last resort to save what is left of his hearing. Oh yeah, it's always on your mind. Allen is a medical guinea pig of sorts. I keep thinking that uh, they're not going to screw up if they're <laughs> the first one maybe. Huh? I don't know. At least I hope not. <laughs> At Sioux Valley's Cancer Center, Allen's head is placed in traction using a halo. He will make medical history as the first patient to undergo a procedure in which doctors map the dime-sized tumor on his acoustic nerve. We um, have MRI scans and CT scans that we reconstruct three-dimensionally in the computer and then we can look at from any angle we want to treat and um, see what the tumor shape up, shape like from that. Once doctors know what the tumor looks like, they can also determine exactly where to direct radiation and how much of it to destroy it. If a certain structure we want to avoid is in the way and we don't want that structure to get almost none of radiation, we can decrease the intensity of, of that beam. Allowing Alan to save his hearing while at last losing the tumor he has lived with for the past six years. Now there are only 27 such machines like this in the country. One reason might be the price tag. It's around two and a half million dollars. Although shy when you first meet her, Anna Molenhoff has a beaming personality. And she's creative and she's a ball of fire. That's something her mom, Jenna Molenhoff, says hasn't changed, despite having to spend hours and even days at a time in the hospital. She's doing very well with everything. Doing well, considering less than two months ago, she was diagnosed with a malignant brain tumor after collapsing at day camp. And they did a CT scan and found out that you know, the tumor was baseball size. It's a very challenging tumor. And we spent several hours and we took most of it out. And then on the following day, she had an MRI that shows a little residual. Then we went back and took that out. Sanford doctor Wilson Asfora says it was a difficult surgery with the tumor sitting on her brain stem. But he says she came through with flying colors. Yeah, she did very well. Uh, there are many complications that can occur following this type of surgery, many, a variety of neurological impairments that could occur, and she was lucky that she did very well. But that's still just the beginning of her fight. Because the tumor can spread throughout her spine easily, she has to undergo chemotherapy and radiation. Um, the only time we have any trouble is during chemo when they have to access her um, you know, that's scary for anybody seeing a needle go into your chest. 
Anna's treatments will roll over into the first couple of weeks of school. But Molenhoff hopes her daughter will be able to go back at least part time before going through another round of chemotherapy. It's frustrating for me to see her get sick, um, you know, and be in pain. It's also frustrating for me to see her life almost put on hold. And while she's been forced to give up things many kids take for granted, this special little girl is fighting for what really matters. So hopefully after a course of, of chemo and radiation therapy of the entire head and spine, I should be tumor free, you know, hopefully for a very, very long time. You know, cures can be re accomplished. So hopefully she'll have a cure. You know, with all hope, if she, if she goes on to become the normal, um, normal person and doesn't have to worry and she's been in remission for 20 some odd years, you know, that'd be fantastic. Giving this little ball of fire her spark back. With Eye on Kelloland, I'm Nicole Winters. My name is Paul Talar is a very outgoing, happy, and loving five-year-old. Singing is one of his favorite activities, but just a couple weeks ago, he couldn't even talk. Paul was very sick. This home video from South Sudan shows just how much of a struggle Paul had with everyday activities. The video was shot in April, less than half a year after Paul was diagnosed with a brain tumor. It was getting worse every time, every day. That's Just cool, a few man. weeks ago, Paul could barely swallow and wasn't able to move the right side of his body. All the people were worried about his life. The family says every doctor in Africa and several neurologists in the United States did not want to operate on Paul. The tumor was located within Paul's brain stem. Sioux Falls neurosurgeon Dr. Wilson Asfora decided to try the risky surgery. A mission group raised money for Paul's trip to America. If he had come here a day later, I don't think he would have survived. As soon as Paul arrived, Asfora did the first of two surgeries. We cut a hole in the skull and in the brain. The first surgery was to relieve the pressure in the brain. Then two weeks ago, Asfora tried to remove the tumor that had been causing Paul's health issues. If you damage the brain stem, patients don't wake up. Or if they do wake up, they have major neurological impairment. <laughs> Thankfully, not only was Asfora able to remove almost all of Paul's tumor, but it was also not cancerous. The five-year-old is now back to talking, smiling, and singing. He's my friend. It's a great feeling. There's nothing in the world can pay me for that. You know, it's just to see a child so happy. As for expects, Paul's condition will continue to improve over the next two years. His mom has not only pledged to help others because of what she calls a miracle, but she believes her son will bring smiles to many other faces. With that very bad condition, all people were worried, even the sisters, the brothers. But Paul, Paul never worried. He was telling me that, Mom, God will help me. So he was encouraging me. With Health Beat, I'm Casey Wannenberg. Okay, let's inject you a little bit. This is how most people know Wilson Asfora. The Brazilian-born doctor is a prominent neurosurgeon. Medicine is his life. But music is his passion. Asfora learned to play guitar when he was 16. He played for money in the subways during medical school in England. And he joined a Latin band while working in Canada. But musically, there is one more thing he wants to do. Music is my hobby. And I always had a dream of playing with a symphonic orchestra. So Asfora asked the conductor of the South Dakota Symphony about recording some of his music. So I said, well, that's fine. I said, is, that, is anybody written down? Well only a little. So he brought me a page or two, and, uh, but most of it was in his head. And some of it is his own, and some of it is, uh, a lot of it is by a good friend of his from, from his uh, days of youth uh, in, in Brazil. Smith put Asfora in touch with Anita Ruth, an arranger from Minneapolis. She created arrangements for a 60-piece orchestra. 
as Fora brought in three other musicians from Brazil to give the tune a Brazilian beat, and as Fora no longer played his guitar solo. As Fora calls this song, Journey to the Badlands, it will be the title cut on the 12-song compact disc he is producing. The name Journey to, to the Badlands came about because I'm from Brazil, and in Brazil there are also Badlands. And I thought there was a similarity between the Brazilian and South Dakota Badlands. So I thought the music from that region of Brazil would fit the spirit of Dakota. The singing boys of Sioux Falls pitched in some accompanying vocals. Anita Ruth told me that she, uh, she told them, uh, you know, one false move or any sound from anybody and you're out of here. And they were marvelous. That's our 16th, you just push like crazy. Don't do that, it's perfect. Another one, Mom's top. Yeah, right now, let's do another one. Wilson, come on. Good. One more. For Asfora, hearing his music come alive in an orchestra was a dream come true. It's a great sensation. I really enjoyed being there and hearing the orchestra play. It's indescribable. With Eye on Kelloland, I'm Jay Trobeck. Yeah. That was a good one. That had a good spirit.